I am working on my HVAC design course that I'm very excited about. And I wanted to demonstrate something really fun. There's this myth that 500 square feet per ton is your kind of cooling load. That's what the old fashioned HVAC kind of rule of thumb sizing. The joke is they stood across the street and covered up your house with one finger was one ton, two fingers and two tons. Makes no sense, total ridiculous. I would like to demonstrate to you today that there is no way to have a house require one ton of air conditioning for each 500 square feet. We're gonna use our HVAC design calculations to do this scientifically. So here we are. We're gonna start out with a house. We're gonna call it the slop house. I would call it something dirtier, but I'm not allowed to swear as much now that I've got kids. So this is a family channel. We're in Miami. I'm gonna go ahead and put my money where my mouth is and say that even in one of the hardest places to cool in the country, it's gonna be hard to hit that 500 square feet per ton number. So we've got Miami, we have a ground temp of 70 degrees. So that's not really helping us with the slab that much. You can see all of our weather data that we've got here. So now when we go into the drawing board, now we're gonna do all kinds of different things to this place to try and get it to be worse. Um, right now, what we have is a 2,500 square foot home, which is the average uh, in the United States of America right now that's being built. This is fresh, by the way, uh, not old. We're not, there's like so many varieties of older homes that we could do that I'm just not gonna waste time with that because we're talking about like new systems going in and this 500 square foot per ton is still persisting. Okay, so here's our properties. Uh, let's look at this. So we've got, you can see we've got nine foot ceilings. We have walls that are framed vinyl sided, three eighths inch sheathing, wood sheathing, that's OSB or whatever. R13 in the walls, which is code from 2009 IECC. 2009 IECC is 15 years ago. Basically, every state in the country is on this code at this point. Uh, and if they're not, then there's probably something weird going on. Um, politically, you should look at, at your who's lobbying that. On the inside, we've got half inch drywall. We have no exterior insulation. We've got two by four walls at 16 inch on center uh, spacing. Boom, nothing special. Our ceiling is a vented attic with dark colored asphalt shingles, no rooftop insulation like continuous or anything like that. We're venting the attic, not with a radiant barrier, not with any kind of a fan or anything like that. It's just straight up R30 was code in Florida in 2009 energy code. We have half inch drywall underneath that. We end up with just shy of 30,000 BTUs per hour. That's two and a half tons. We need to get this house to be five tons if we're going to meet that 500 square foot per ton number. So we got to start messing with this. These windows, by the way, all of them, we're, we're, we've got window area that's 25% of the wall. So the wall is 50 foot long, nine feet high. Multiply that by 0.25. And that is how big I made each of these windows for each of the cardinal directions which you can see right up here. Now, if I start changing the direction, because this house is square, and because all the windows are the same size, you can see it's not changing the load at all for me to spin this house. So what we wanna do with these terrible windows, these are, uh, let's see here, the code window is a U value of 1.2. That's less than an R1 window. That's a single pane of glass. And an SHGC, which is the low E coding value of 0.3. That was again, code from 2009 IECC. I'm going to take away these three windows. And I'm going to make this thing an entire window wall that's going to be 50 feet long and nine feet high. I've made all of the windows, which is still a 25% window to wall ratio. I lumped them all over onto the north side of the building. And you can see that we actually dropped our cooling load. Now let's make them all on the west side of the building. We've now gotten up to about 40. So we added about 10,000 BTUs per hour, almost a full ton, by taking the windows from all over the house, which is called adequate exposure diversity or AED, and then making them all lumped onto the west side. The west side is the most dangerous side because generally it's gonna be hottest at 5 p.m. That's when the sun is gonna be beaming in through those west windows. You're coming home from work and starting to cook potentially. So all that stuff is happening at 5 p.m. That's why really this HVAC design is about one hour in the year, which is five o'clock in the afternoon on the hottest day of the year. That's kind of what we're looking at here. So 
all of that is bad. We just did some bad stuff to it. So now we need to figure out how to make this even worse because we're still not hitting our 60 kilobtus per hour. 60,000 would be five tons. Each ton is 12,000 BTUs per hour. So we need to get to 60. We're at 40 right now. We're going to do more stuff. Air infiltration method. So right now we've got the infiltration set to uh, one story suburban shielding. We have a seven ACH 50, which again, 2009 IECC, that was what we were dealing with. So at this point, we've got the kind of max code built that we can do. We need to start messing with this outside of the code. So let's go to the infiltration method. We're going to make it simplified instead. I have a whole video about what these numbers mean, but this is like what most people would do when they come into an HVAC design software is they'd say that the air, the uh, tightness, let's make it the leakiest we could possibly make it, loose. And now let's go back out, see what that did. So making it loose added a couple thousand, but we're now at like maybe we could call that 44,000 BTUs per hour. We're still not even at four tons. We, we still need to get to five. So we've made this about as leaky as we can get it. Let's start doing some more extreme stuff. We're in Miami. Let's add some skylights. So we add a skylight in the middle of the building. Well, we've got 39,000 of sensible, which is heat uh, cooling, and then almost 7,000 of latent, which is humidity. That means we need to do 7,000 of drying. First of all, look at this, which is, this is a single clear uninsulated skylight, okay? Let's go a little bigger. Let's make it six by six. Uh, we're still like mm, 50, that's good. Let's make it 10 by 10. Okay, now right here, we've got 55,000 plus over 6,000. We just cleared that 500 square feet per ton number by adding a 10 by 10 or you know, however many smaller ones that would make up. And that's a huge number. That's 100 square feet. That's going to be roughly 4% of your total ceiling area is going to be made up of glass, just a single pane of glass with no special stuff about it. Now, there was a code in Florida for um, skylights back in 2009, and we need to figure out what that is. That was a skylight U factor of 0.75 and an SHGC of 0.3. No, no, nothing, anything special at all. We're still, now we have to make this thing even bigger to try and hit code. So well, let's make it 11 by 12. Uh, nope, let's make it 16 by 16. Okay, now 16 by 16 skylight. And we finally have come in just at that needing 500 square feet per ton. Now I'm trying to like break through the 60,000 and any HVAC professional would be like, hey, you got to start needing five tons when you pass four and a half tons. I'm like, okay, cool. That's fine. This is a video. I'm just trying to make a point. My point is, this is ridiculous. This is a ridiculous house. We have uh, broken code on air leakage, and we've had to add an insane amount of terrible skylights from 2009 code. Okay. Now let's open up a wackier version of this home. We're still in Miami. Okay. But now we've made the shape really bizarre. What we've done is increase the surface to volume ratio. The most efficient kind of a home is actually like, would be a sphere, a perfect sphere would be perfect. That would be the most uh, volume per surface area. What we've done here is really make a lot more vulnerability for the walls. And also the, uh, well, the ceiling and the floor aren't bigger, but they have more perimeter. And the, that's the thing about the floor that's important. So if we look at this floor, we've got 2,500 uh, square feet still, but instead of 450s, which would be 200 linear feet of exposed perimeter, now we're up to 426, more than double. And likewise, on the walls, we went from four 50-foot long walls that are nine feet high, which would be 1,800 square feet of wall area, up to 3,800, again, more than double. So now, in order to keep my 25% one-to-wall ratio as the architect who's trying to make this house pretty and fun to live in and well-lit in every room, I'm going to have to double all these window sizes. So I'm going to take this window, and I'm going to also make it here. So now, we have twice as many windows as we had before, 
as well as twice as much wall, obviously. And now instead of starting at the baseline where we had started around two and a half tons before, we're starting at four tons automatically. So that's one thing that you can do to make your home more efficient is simplify the shape. I say that uh, you know, often on this channel, but in this case now we have a more complicated shape. This house is dumb looking, just to be clear. Like I don't, I've never seen a house that's this dumb looking, but architects sure do love to add little things that jet out and stick, you know, so when you start doing that, yeah, you're gonna increase um, what's going on. We now need to do more things to screw this up because again, we're trying to shoot this from, from 48 where we're starting here up to 60. So let's immediately go where we went before and say that we're gonna change our infiltration method from seven ACH 50 again, which, which was code simplified. Let's make it loose. Um, we're still, now we just passed 50, trying to hit 60. Let's do something crazy. Let's add a fireplace, even though we're in Miami. <clears throat> we'll add a fireplace and instead of average, we'll make it loose, like as leaky as we can get. You can see we haven't actually changed our cooling sizing at all. Let's add five fireplaces. It says, uh-oh, uh, this house has more than two fireplaces. You might be doing something weird. That's okay. Um, you can see we're not changing the cooling side at all. I'm allowed to add up to nine fireplaces in this uh, program. And you can see that actually we're not dinging this at all because we have completely maxed out what the air leakage could possibly do for this. So uh, air leakage is the most that we could have for what it is, which is a single story home with suburban shielding. So. Now we can see here on this breakdown that our windows are in fact taking up almost 75% of the load um, and half in the wintertime. That would be kind of a lot in the wintertime. Uh, so now let's take this house that's got nine fireplaces that are all open hearth with no damper in them. We already played around with skylights, so we know that we could do that. Let's add a floor to this. So I'm gonna actually copy this entire thing and we're gonna add a floor too. We're gonna call this 10 feet up. That actually doesn't matter in the software. Um, so now we're gonna do this. I'm gonna drag this so that it's living directly on top of our understory. Okay, now where we were just a minute ago was at 54,000 and we needed to get to 60,000. Uh, we were at 90% of what we needed to get. Right now, we've gone to 85,000 of cooling and we need 12,000 of drying to keep take care of this 12,000 of humidity. So we went from 90% there. And because we have now increased the size of our house, we increased the amount of square footage of the walls. We increased the amount of square footage of the windows. We've got the same windows, low and high. On each floor, we've got 25% window coverage. Um, we're at 97,000 of cooling total. That's cooling plus drying. And that is only 81% of where we need to get to. So now if we've got two stories, we actually need to do even more crazy stuff to try and get this place, to get this place to meet 500 square feet per ton, which now that we're twice as big, we're at 5,000 square feet. We need 10 tons to go in here to meet this mythological number that's 500 square feet per ton. It's even harder for us to do that if the house has two floors. So any two-story house, I'm gonna say right now, there is no chance for you to even try to hit 500 square feet per ton. It's two floors. That's one of the efficient things that we can do. Now watch this. You would never see this in Miami, but let's say that floor one, let's go here and we'll make the floor half sunk basement. We're gonna go four feet below grade with that nine, foot total wall height. We still have no finish on the flooring. There's no carpet, there's no wood or anything like that. Uh, we're in contact with heavy, dry or light, damp soil. There's no insulation anywhere, okay? And now we're gonna take the walls and we're gonna make them half sunk under the ground. So we're gonna go below grade with the cheapest possible thing we could do. Concrete block that's not filled up with anything, empty cells in contact with the same kind of soil. It's gonna be eight inches thick. It's gonna be four feet below grade, two by four wall with again, R13, which would be code. 
Now we've just dropped it again. We were starting, we were at like 80% and now we're down at 75%. So again, basements are another way that we can really start to affect the efficiency and make this thing more efficient than that weird 500 square feet per ton. So essentially my hypothesis here is I don't think you could actually do this unless we, again, started adding crazy stuff like the skylights that are terrible efficiency all over the place or, you know, things like that. But again, we're as leaky as we can get here. Now, I want to show you something that I have not shown you yet. And some of the HVAC people in the audience might be like, hey, you're cheating. Here's why they would call me a cheater. We haven't talked about ductwork. Now, all of my clients, I'm, I'm really having a hard time thinking of a single person that does not put the ductwork inside the enclosure. This is something that if you want to make your house more high efficiency, it is the first thing you do. Uh, you want to start air sealing also to make it bug proof and noise proof and blah, blah, blah. But like moving those ducts and that HVAC equipment inside the enclosure so it's inside condition space and not in a super hot attic is one of the first things that we do. So let's go ahead and expose the ductwork here. We don't actually have a duct system on this. So let's, let's build it real quick. We'll do flex and flex with junction boxes. Okay, we're gonna do all ceiling registers on both sides. We're gonna do a, a plenum that's gonna go left to right. We're not worried about this wizard right now. And we're gonna put all the, the ducts on the outside walls. Now it looks like this. Okay, so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna change where these things run and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna go into duct heat loss factor. And instead of having all my ducts inside condition space, which has been cheating so far, I'm gonna put them into a vented attic with an asphalt shingle, dark color. Uh, we're gonna do ceiling average. And we're gonna do a leakage instead of energy star, which is like where it kind of defaults to, to a manual J, just default leakage number. Now we can see that we start out where in the beginning, we started this same exact design out at two and a half tons. We're starting out 15,000 BTUs higher than that. So we added one and a quarter tons to our initial design of this beautiful, perfect little simple house that's perfectly square and has a great surface to volume ratio. We added a ton and a quarter to it just by moving the ducts up into the attic. But we are still not at five tons. We're still not at 500 square feet per ton, even after doing that. So now uh, let's go again and do uh, simplified infiltration. Again, we're going outside of what code is requiring. We're still at 47,000. We need to get to 60. That's not enough. We got to do more stuff. Let's make this place terrible. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the moment that the HVAC contractors are worried about, is when we are not actually meeting code with the enclosure. So even though a builder might say, oh, we're gonna build this place airtight, which a lot of my clients like intend to, my clients know they need to be there every day to look at the airtightness details and actually fix the things that are going wrong. A lot of these HVAC guys deal with builders who say they're going to do things and then they don't actually do them. They won't follow through with them because the drywall goes up and then it's hidden and then, oh, oops, oh well. So let's do the walls. Let's, instead of a wall that's an R13 insulation, let's make it R11 instead. Um, we could make this even worse. In Florida, there's cinder block construction and we can kind of like mess around with that. But right now we're just trying to make a point here. Uh, I added 2000 BTUs. Uh, of peak load by doing that. So it's again, like not the end of the world. Let's go up to the ceiling and make this instead of an R30, which meets code, let's make the ceiling R13, which would be three and a half inches of bad insulation. We are still not meeting 60,000 BTUs per hour. We're at 48 plus 10. So let's go do the most extreme thing we could possibly think of, which would be going in here and making this, uh, these ducts as bad as we could possibly make them. We're gonna put them inside the vented attic, but instead of having them sealed at all, we're gonna make them completely unsealed. And I am going to take away the insulation on them entirely. So these are just bare naked ducts up there. Okay, that's more like it. So now we're at 240,000 BTUs per hour needed. And you can see how much more complicated our duct system got 
just because we did that. So now, um, if we go into the breakdown, we can see that our duct load, which is this red, the ducts eat up 79% of the heat load needed for heating in the wintertime, and they're 85% of what we need to cool about the house in the summertime. That's totally crazy. And if we went over here and we saw that's almost 20 tons of cooling that we would need. We can, sure, if you're going to do that, if you're going to do insane things, you can absolutely hit that 500 square feet per ton. So I just wanted to make sure that this had been kind of like spelled out for people that it's really, really hard to hit this weird standard that people used to use back in the 1970s. Nowadays, if anybody does anything close to 500 square feet per ton, it's a drastic mistake. And you should just make sure that you mention this to them. Feel free to share this video. Feel free to comment below if you have anything uh, comment wise that you want to like say, hey, you didn't do this, make another video. I, we can play with this all day long and there's like all kinds of iterations that we could do. Uh, I hope that if you're interested in HVAC design, you do check out my HVAC design course when it comes out. If you need an HVAC design, I'm happy to give you a quote. There's also a big list of scientific HVAC professionals that is totally free to join, totally free to use on our homediagnosis.tv website. Please do go check that out. I'm linking it on screen right now. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time. Mm -hmm.